Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Naturally Mimi, um, and today I'm just going to talk about um, how I'm dealing with grief and how my first holiday as a single parent went. If you do not follow me on Instagram or if you didn't read the description to my last video, if you do not know, on September the 22nd, 2021, I lost my husband to COVID-19. I chose to come back and do this. It's because of him, my husband. Um, he invested so much into me and with doing YouTube. So I didn't want to give up on it because he believed in me so much with doing it. So I feel like I have to make him proud and do it and honor him by doing it because he invested so much into me with doing YouTube. So I just wanted to come on here and talk about how I'm dealing with losing my husband and spending the holiday as basically a single parent. Um, really, I mean, reality has set in. But over the holidays, it really hit me hard because I was shopping for my son, like, by myself, going to find the things that he wanted or the things that he asked for by myself. And I'm, every year for 10 years, every birthday, every Christmas, me and my husband, we do those things together. And that was just something that was that I wasn't just used to. I'm used to him being right there by my side. And it hit me more for Christmas than it did like Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving, I looked at it as just like another day. But Christmas, like, it really did dawn on me because I was doing all of these things myself, um, thinking of ways to make sure my son got everything he wanted because when it came down to it, my husband made sure he got everything he wanted. And that's why my birthday in September, they're gonna be different for me because September, that's the month that we got married and August is my birthday. And on my birthday, my son's birthday, he made sure like this year, he got us everything that we wanted. He got me everything that I wanted. Um, I just mentioned things that I wanted to further my channel a bit of my channel he would come through the door with it like all i had to do was mention it i didn't really want it like i was just it's just an idea and he would get those things and bring it to me my son's birthday of this year he made sure that he got everything that he asked for on his birthday list i mean when i say everything he got everything that this boy could have wanted he is an amazing person or whatever and I don't know I have some good days I have some bad days I have my days where I just go into this uh, mood of like I really just don't want to be bothered sometimes I come off as mean I'm being mean but I'm having one of those days now when things first happened I didn't know how to deal with it even though my husband talked about death a lot, like, and he wondered about death a whole lot. And, I mean, we talked about different things. He didn't want nobody to be sad. He didn't want anybody to be crying. He just wanted everybody to be happy that he made it to be with Jesus, like, and rejoice that he's with Jesus and he's reunited with family members that has went before him. Um, but in the beginning, that was hard for me. I found myself like I would just be sitting there and I would just go into panic attacks. But thank you, Jesus. I've been delivered from that part because I didn't want my son seeing me that way. But I do still like have my moments of where I feel like 
that point like with panic attacks and full-on breakdowns with anxiety because that's basically what it is like I don't know I don't want to sit here and self-diagnose myself but that's basically what I feel like it is I had really high anxiety and it's like um, a lot of times I just think about you know he wouldn't want me he wouldn't want me doing that like being that upset so I try to muscle up the strength and be strong but it's so hard like in 11 years me and my husband have been together 11 years we knew each other back when we were in middle school but we have been together for 11 years and out of those 11 years we've been married for six and before his death we were celebrating our six year anniversary and it's just crazy how in the blink of an eye you have a person and then in the blink of an eye you don't have that person so it's gonna kind of be all over the place but i'm just talking about my feelings as they go but he was such an amazing person and how i'm feeling now is he was my my hero he's my superman and it's just like the world around me it looks so different things feel different like um over the past month i've had some amazing things happen for me but it just doesn't feel the same because he's not here to share that with you know here in the physical to share that with um 11 years um of our whole relationship we never spent more than 24 hours apart like we were always together always together you see jerry you don't see mimi that's just the way it was if there was somewhere where he couldn't go i wasn't going if there was somewhere i could go he wasn't gonna go either it's just how we were and we were the best of friends like we could say anything in front of each other he could tell me anything i could tell him anything and that's such a hard that's the hardest part about it to me is not having that that person that confidant that you're used to having with you every day you come home to them every day they come home to you every day y'all sit down and y'all talk about each other's day and it's a feeling that can't be explained that feeling to me is um how i feel is like when you laying in the bed and you all warm up under this blanket and then someone just comes and snatches the blanket off of you it's just like this cold cold feeling that you don't want to feel and you just want to grab your covers back and cover you up i don't that's how it feels for me i don't have that anymore when i tell you when i tell you he is my best friend and i say is because a lot of times i find myself i still talk to him i still say things to him but that's exactly what it feels like you warm in your bed sleeping and somebody just waking you up by snatching the covers off of you and you just feel cold it's not that warm feeling that you were feeling at first it's just at the end of the day it's like I feel like I, I have nobody to talk to, even though I do. But that was my person that I could talk to about anything. And he could come to me about anything. And we could talk to each other about anything. And he was always so honest with me. But even... But I do have people that I can talk to. I do have people that I can talk to, but that was my person. That's why I went to 
when I had a long day and I needed a hug and he gave the best hugs and I just felt so safe knowing that he was around and he's there and he would be there if I had any problems he would drop everything even if I would call him back to me like you know everything's okay he's still there he's still coming like that was he's my person and it's just like I don't have my comfort anymore <laughs> even even though I be around a lot of people I'm around family and I'm around you know just people I still feel alone because because that something is missing for me I don't have it anymore and reality really said he ain't doing Christmas shopping and picking out stuff for my son alone like it really hit <laughs> it really hit me that I don't have that no more I don't have that best friend <laughs> he was such a good and genuine person and he was very much so loving and I felt that love from him he was also like I said in a sense to me he came in and he became a father figure to me also I didn't have a father my father wasn't in my life at all throughout my life so I didn't know anything like with seeing how a man is supposed to love a woman and stuff like that and things I should know that I should have been taught by my father I learned that from my husband my husband is the one who taught me how to drive my husband is the one who taught me how to handle weapons and just the things that daddies would teach their little girls my husband is the one who taught me those things and taught me things about relationships throughout our relationships like how things because when I came into our relationships I was naive very naive with a lot of things but he taught me a lot of things and he kind of guided me and helped mold me into the woman that I am today because he came in my life and did what a father is supposed to do and at the same time, being a great father to his son, he has not went a day without my son. Like, he was always his main priority. Like, that was his main priority. He loved him with everything in him. But... I'm getting a lot better with dealing with it. Um, people have suggested that I talk to someone. Um, I haven't started talking to anybody, but I may need to look into that, you know, because there was a point in time with the grief I was in disbelief. I didn't want to, I don't know how that's coming off, but I didn't want to really like, I didn't want to hear his voice. I didn't want to look at pictures. It was just certain stuff that I didn't want to do because I wanted to believe in my heart that he was going to come back home. I just wanted to feel like he was going to work or going to the store or something and he was coming back. And that's the kind of feeling like the second month, I think that's how I was handling. I was just I just want to keep this feeling of like, oh, he's just gone. He'll come right back. I don't know if that makes any sense to someone, but I just wanted to hold on to that feeling. I didn't want to look at it. It's like, you know, we're looking at his videos and we're looking at his pictures and a memorial to him. No, I just wanted it to be a thing of like, 
he's going, he's going to come back. He's going, he's going to come back. Like he'll be walking through the door at any minute. I just wanted to hold on to that feeling of disbelief. If that's what you want to call it. I just wanted to hold on to that feeling of disbelief. Believing that he was going to come back home. But now, I really don't know what point I'm at. It's like some days, it's like some days I'm good. And then there's days where I'm just constantly thinking about it. I try to stay busy. Um, I started back working a few weeks after to give me something to do to keep my mind off thinking about it. But returning back to work, the same place I work, when everything transpired, it just brings back memories of when I would be at work, the days he would have the car, he would come and pick me up, or the days I would call. I'm standing at the time clock, and every time I go to clock out, that was my first, my first person that I called. Before I called anybody, when I clocked in to work, when I clocked out to work, I was calling him. That was just my thing. Um, so I found myself when I returned to work, still not grasping, grasping the concept that he's gone. I find myself because I haven't took his contact out of my phone. Why would I? I haven't took his contact out of my phone, but I found myself about to call him when I'm getting ready to clock out because that was my routine. That was my thing. Um, sitting down on my break at work, I would call him. We'll sit on the phone and talk my whole entire break unless he was like working and busy or whatever. But I would just sit there and I would be about to call him and there goes my breakdown, realizing that I don't have that anymore. Um, dealing with this, this is the worst heartbreak that I could have ever experienced. I have lost people. I have even had, I've lost them. I had a miscarriage. I basically lost a child. <sighs> I lost my grandmother. I lost my grandfather. But out of all of those losses, I don't want to sound harsh, but this has hit me really hard because it was unexpected. Like, I had no warning. Even while he was in the hospital battling it, I'm thinking, like, this is my Superman. He's strong. He can get through this. He's going to make it through. We're going to be bringing him home. And I'm going to be taking care of him. And we're going to sit back and we're going to talk about this. We're going to, we're going to talk about it. We're going to, you know, recover. We're going to do better. We're going to better ourselves. And it didn't happen. But in a blink of an eye, he's gone. I always thought he was going to be this old man. Me and him, we grow old together. We be old in our rocking chair. <laughs> Cracking jokes, laughing about the things we have done and did over the years. And it's just crazy because, like, certain shows and stuff that I watch or have watched when we watch together and I watch them back now. And I be wanting to laugh where I do laugh sometime about the jokes that we have cracked that it has been me and him and we crack jokes about it and and I think about and I recollect on all those times um I just really just I miss him and I just a hurt that a band-aid or anything can't heal like my comfort is gone. He's not here anymore. So basically, I'm just dealing. But overall, the holiday, it was a success. I got my son everything that he could want and more because I know his dad would have done that. He would have got him everything and some.
even though it was sad for him he wished his dad could have been there um but pretty much overall he was happy his grandma his grandmas they even got him things that he asked for so it was a pretty good turnout so he has that love and support i have that love and support but it's just a different love and support that i don't have anymore and i'm still dealing with it it's only been three months so yeah so i feel like 2022 is my year to make him proud because i know he's still with me he always joked and said if he went before me he'll always be around and be messing with me and stuff like that though i know he's here a lot of times um and i just talk to him sometimes as if he were here and when I think about memories, good memories and stuff, like, try to remember that he's here. So, yeah. He invested so much into my dream of being a YouTuber. He thought everything that I did was amazing. When I edit my videos, the way I edit my videos, made intros and things. He always thought it was just so amazing and he invested in me by buying me equipment, ring lights. He even bought me a gimbal. The gimbal was the last thing that he bought me for my birthday. For my birthday and I never got to use it. The last time that I used it was the last time that we went out and we had we all had fun together. That's when I used my gimbal when we was at the park. We was at the park and I had my nieces and my son and we was at the park. We was having such a good time. We was having such a good time. He um he ended up like my nieces wanted to race me, my son and my husband, they wanted to race each other, so he went to go and race him and he tore like in the process of running he tore his he pulled his hamstring not tore he pulled it and he was like why didn't you talk me out of this you usually talk me out of these things and i recorded the whole thing he was so mad at me for recording it he was so mad at me for recording it that but i'm innocent i'm glad that i did because i had that time like he was actually about to beat my son in the race and then pulled his hamstring and he was just he was so funny like his laugh was so infectious like his laugh would make you laugh so hard like he was always being funny and saying funny stuff and and we just had a good time laughing and going on about that and just having so much fun we had so much fun that day, that was the last thing that we got to go out and do with each other. And I'm glad I recorded those moments, even though I want to share them so bad. But he would be so mad at me if I did share that because he was so pissed that I was recording it on my phone. But I'm so glad I got to capture that moment. So 2022, I'm going to make effort to start back and get my YouTube channel back up running in memories of my husband because I know I can do this. He believed in me and he pushed me more than I pushed myself. So I'm going to be doing that in his memory, his memory, in his memory. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And also, you guys, if you are sick, stay home, wear your mask, take this stuff seriously because it is very serious. Not only was my husband sick, but I was very much sick myself. My husband just got pneumonia and had to be ventilated. I had a terrible cough, black like blackouts and sweats. Like we were very sick. The virus is no joke, y'all. Take this stuff seriously. But 
I'm just saying this to say that. Guys, take this stuff serious. It's very serious. I wouldn't wish it on nobody. But like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'm going to share a few things, a few pictures and stuff. And videos that I have of my husband. See you guys in the next video.